Hey there, good to see you. Today in this video, we are taking a look at a new photo enhancement application called Photo AI made by Topaz Labs. This is a new yet in some ways old application because it takes three pre-existing photo enhancement desktop apps, Denoise AI, Sharpen AI, and Gigapixel AI, and bundles them all together in a new interface, a new application, a single app that you may now use to denoise, sharpen, and upscale your photography. And it functions both as a standalone application that you can just drag images into and then export newly enhanced versions. Or you may also use it as a plugin for major photo editing software, including Adobe Lightroom Classic, Photoshop, and Capture One. Now, Photo AI is definitely the kind of utility that will appeal to uh, you know, to pixel peeping photographers, of which I am a proud member of the club. People who view images large on a high resolution screen, where you're able to see like every single detail and texture. I mean, it's a pretty intoxicating and, and alluring application. And it's a lot of fun to use, especially with older images, because you can open them and transform them and sometimes get some pretty remarkable images out of older digital images, especially like older DSLR images of mine. Those images can have pretty dramatic results, especially when shooting at high ISOs. But Photo AI can also be used by photographers who either, you know, don't have the time or don't care to be going in and, you know, adjusting all these little individual settings because Photo AI has a virtual assistant in it called Autopilot. And what Autopilot does is that every time you import an image into Photo AI, either through drag and drop or through a plugin, it automatically analyzes the entire image and it comes up with recommended settings for denoising and sharpening and recovering faces and even upscaling images in order to create a better looking shot. And it does so intelligently. It goes in and analyzes the noise in the image. It checks to see how soft the details are. It automatically detects subjects as well. And then you can go in and refine, you know, the, the selection of the subject if you want to. And the reason that subject selection is important is because then tools like Sharpen can only apply their effect to the uh, to the main subject in your shot, which is a pretty common photo editing technique because oftentimes, especially with shallow depth of field shots, you don't want to be sharpening the entire frame. You want to you know, maintain the nice bokeh that you have in your, in your shot behind your subject, and you only want to be sharpening them. And autopilot is the kind of thing that, you know, if you don't like uh, what it produced for you, you can go in and tweak the individual settings. You can turn it off altogether if you don't want any of it. Or you can also go in and configure autopilot, effectively train auto autopilot to select particular features that you want. You know, what it is you want autopilot to be looking for, what it is you want it to be enabling. And this is an area where I expect Topaz Labs will probably uh, develop more fully, will probably be expanding with more functionality, making it even more sophisticated as you know, future versions of Photo AI are released. Photo AI allows you to import multiple images, and when you do, they appear as you know, little thumbnails down in the bottom row. The limitation here, though, is that you have to click and select on each individual image and then go through and apply enhancements individually to each one, which in a way makes sense. And I, and I understand why it is that way, especially with the autopilot functionality. And you probably wanna be tailoring your settings to each one. However, if you have like, I don't know, like 15, 20 images and every image is, you know, more or less pretty much the same, well, it's gonna get pretty old going through and, you know, clicking on each individual one and applying the same settings over and over again. Now, since you have the option of editing either raw files or TIFF files from Capture One and Adobe Lightroom, some of you may be wondering, well, which one should I choose? Well, in their documentation, Topaz Labs recommends editing raw files for the best possible image quality. And they're right, there is definitely a qualitative difference between editing raw images and TIFF images in Photo AI. However, in my experience, raw is not always necessarily better. It's actually the opposite, in my opinion, more often than not. I would oftentimes see better, more natural looking results when denoising and sharpening using the TIFF option as opposed to editing the source raw data. There's something about the raw processing, especially when denoising and sharpening, that can sometimes make images look, you know, like a little bit rubbery, a little bit plastic, even when the strength uh, slider is turned all the way down. 
I think in general, in the version of Photo AI I tested at the time of this review, and I'll put the version number up here just so you know. In my testing, I think the raw processing is a little too heavy, a little too strong. Whereas when editing TIFF images, the results more often than not appeared more natural and they didn't look, and the effects didn't look quite as heavy. And I felt that TIFF also did a better job of retaining detail. Oftentimes I would notice when editing and denoising raw images that some of the subtle details would be lost. They would just be smoothed over. But on the flip side, where I noticed a pretty big difference between raw and TIFF, with raw being superior to TIFF, was when upscaling images. Upscaled raw images produced by Photo AI look incredible. Here's a comparison of a 45 megapixel RAW file created using a Canon EOS R5 that has been upscaled 200% to 90 megapixels. And the results in Photo AI are definitely better than upscaling RAW files 200% using the Enhance tool in Adobe Lightroom Classic, which is what you see on the left-hand side of this comparison. So in addition to denoising, sharpening, and upscaling, Photo AI has a new fourth enhancement option as well called Recover Faces. And what this tool does is enhance the appearance of facial features, and it does so intelligently. It uses machine learning to automatically detect people in your shot, to automatically detect uh, facial features, including eyes, you know, noses, hair, all that good stuff. And instead of going in and applying like some fake like clarity or sharpening or something like that, this is a tool that actually goes in and fills in details. It reconstructs the data in the image in order to create a better looking eye, in order to create more detail in hair, which can produce some really interesting results. For example, this image here, this is an image that has always bothered me because I missed focus when taking this image. I was using a Leica rangefinder, but running it through Photo AI, it does a pretty remarkable job, I think, with reconstructing the eyes, with uh, with creating more texture in the hair. And the results are totally believable. I mean, I know it's not the original image, but the image now looks definitely sharper and has definitely been improved over this soft, out of focus version that I had before. But what you're looking at here is the TIFF version of the image. If we then try and process the original raw file and run recover faces on it, the results aren't quite as good. There's something not quite right about how the facial features are being reconstructed in the raw file that just don't look particularly natural. I feel like the TIFF version is far superior. It's a very subtle difference, but it's a big difference. I feel like the TIFF version just looks way more natural and it does not look like it's been reconstructed or, you know, or in, you know, manipulated in any way compared to the raw one, which just Ugh, it, uh, really, it just makes me it just makes me kind of uncomfortable. And time and time again, the TIFF version was always more natural and always looked better than the raw one. But the good news here is that, you know, if this is a feature that appeals to you, just edit a TIFF version of the image instead of raw, and you'll be perfectly fine. One of the things that I would really love to see in Photo AI is a grain effect. This is something that is in uh, the sibling application to Photo AI. It is in Video AI, and I feel like you know it could be ported over to Photo AI. And I think it would be a really nice like finishing layer, like a nice thing to add on top of the other enhancements. Of course, it's weird to think of grain as being an enhancement because it's kind of like a like a negative enhancement, right? But in my opinion, like especially when denoising and applying sharpening, sometimes the edges can get a little crispy, and sometimes areas get a little smooth and Having a little bit of grain would uh, would you know inject a little bit of texture, I think, into flat, glassy, kind of smooth areas, and help gel the pixels together a little bit better because sometimes they get uh, you know like almost a little too digital looking, and just you know applying a nice grain on top, I think, would help mitigate some of those things. So hopefully, uh, that is something that they could do. Uh, another thing I would love to see is more options for saving images when using one of the plugins, when using the plugin for uh, Lightroom, Capture One, and Photoshop. Right now, when you you know import an image using the plugin, the data is saved directly back. You can't like then export a JPEG or a TIFF or a RAW file or whatever to your local file system and then control quality and all that as you can when dragging files directly into the standalone app. So I would love to have the option of either saving back to where 
uh, the image originated from or do something else with it. Let's see what else. Uh, another thing I would love to see with the upscale tool right now, all the all the uh, numerical data, all the measurements is in pixels. I think it would be really helpful if they added uh, imperial and metric options there so that say if you're creating a photography print, you could just type in the longest edge. You could just type in like, you know, 40 inches or, you know, whatever. And then you're upscaling to that. And then it does the math on the back end to figure out, you know, how many pixels that actually is. Because right now everything is pixel based. So, you know, you kind of have to you know, figure out and calculate this beforehand, figure out how many pixels is 40 inches or whatever, and then input that number. And I think it'd be a lot nicer if you could just, you know, just choose which which you want. Uh, and then finally, another feature enhancement. And this one is actually a pretty big one. I would love to see Photo AI implement uh, their own camera and lens correction profiles. I asked Topaz about this, and what they told me is that there is a lens correction uh, profile database inside of Photo AI that is based on an open source library that's been around for uh, quite a while now. And whether that library contains lens correction profiles and data for your particular camera and lens is it's kind of up in the air, you know? What I found is that with most of my photos today, which are captured using RF, you know, new RF Canon lenses, there was no effect at all of enabling or disabling lens corrections inside of photo AI. Lens corrections have to be then applied to the raw file created by photo AI using Lightroom or Capture One, using the profiles that are built into it. And I had no problem doing that thereafter once the, the data was saved back. And this feels to me like something that Topaz could really put some effort into and develop their own. I'm, I'm sure it's probably quite a bit of work. I can't even imagine what would be involved in that. But if Photo AI were able to do that, if it could do its own lens correction profiles, and do it better than what Lightroom or Capture One could do, because honestly, I'm really not a fan of the of the of the profiles that are built into Lightroom Classic for Canon cameras. It's it's just yeah, they've just never been as good as you know, say you know what you can find in other software. But if Topaz were able to do this, and if they updated Photo AI so that it could do even better, even more intelligent uh, denoising and sharpening as that data is being demosaic using their own custom profiles, that would be pretty cool. So final thoughts here. Uh, should you take the time to download a free trial of Photo AI from Topaz Labs and try enhancing some raw images, some TIFF images, or some Photoshop documents, whatever it is that you have, is it worth doing? Absolutely, 100%. I would definitely recommend downloading it and trying it out because it's absolutely free. It's not going to cost you anything to do it. All you have to do is click on the link that I've provided down below in the video description. You can download a free trial for Mac OS and Windows. Try it out with your own images. That's always a really important thing to do. Like, don't take my word for it or anyone else's word for it. Test it out for yourself with your own photography and see if it makes a difference. I think this software will be especially helpful and will definitely be a value add for any photographers who like to create large prints, either for themselves or for a client or for a gallery or what have you. It's exceptional at that. If you are someone who primarily publishes images, say to social media, you know, where you're downscaling images and compressing everything down, maybe not so much. It may not make that big of a difference with smaller images. But if you're making large prints and if you are, say, you know, posting large images to a portfolio website online, something like that, then you should see uh, a qualitative difference between how your images currently look and how they could look uh, using a tool like Photo AI. So if you would like to see some of the example images that I shared in this video, you know, the actual images, not, you know, inside of this, you know, YouTube container, um, I have a rather lengthy article over at my website that I've written about Photo AI. It contains uh, example images that you can see the before and after with. I will leave a link to that article down below so you can check that out. Also, I should have mentioned this earlier, but I, I got a little ahead of myself. Uh, this video is not paid for. It's not sponsored. Topaz Labs is not involved with this video. They have not seen this video prior to publication. I paid for Photo AI uh, with my own money. Everything that you heard in this video is my opinion and experience using the software. And by the way, coming up, I think I'm going to post it actually next week. I'm also going to be reviewing Video AI, the sibling application to Photo AI, also produced by Topaz Labs. That is a separate application that is designed for 
enhancing video, as its name implies. It's something you can use to upscale lower resolution video to higher resolution, like 1080 to 4K. You can create uh, slow motion footage with it using slower frame rates, like 24 frames per second, 25, 30. You know, it's an app that I've reviewed here on my channel once before. This is the new version of it, which just recently came out. So it feels like a good time to be taking another look at it and seeing how it works and seeing if it's uh, still worth buying. If you would like to check out that review, uh, remember to subscribe to this channel down below so you can be notified when that video comes out. And you can also sign up for my email newsletter, which you can do over at my website. Again, uh, everything's down in the, in the description. And as always, if you have any comments, questions, anything you want to know, anything I didn't cover or touch on in this video, please feel free to leave a comment down below. Thanks so much, everyone. I will see you next time.